What you doing, honey? I just, I just pantsed my wife. <laughs> She's I just pantsed my wife while she was washing dishes. <laughs> Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to be talking about chickens. What you need to do in the winter time for your chickens. What's good for them, what's going to keep them laying, whether you need to have a heat lamp on them, and all sorts of stuff. So hopefully I'll settle this argument with you and your wife as to whether you need to put some heat out there for the chickens and we'll have some fun today on the farm. All right, guys, you don't have to keep a heat lamp on your chickens unless it gets down to sub-zero Fahrenheit temperatures. You really don't have to unless you have a very windy drafty coop and we'll go inside the coop and we'll talk to you a little bit about that but i'm sure some of you guys are having that argument with your husband or with your wife or with your kids we got to keep the chickens warm well the chickens grow feathers for the winter and grow feathers for the summer that's why they molt they have a down comforter wrapping them up let's talk about food and water now when it gets freezing or gets below freezing your waterers are basically useless your standard chicken waters and what we use is just a pan this pan needs to be clean it's pretty gross but that's what we use or those rubber pans. I'll put a link down below to the rubber pans that we use and to the metal pans that we use. I prefer the metal pan, but you just take the rubber pan out every day, dump it on the ground, give it a stomp, it knocks the ice out, you pour some fresh water in, and you're good to go. Now for food, it's basically the same. You can see the design of our chicken coop here is probably different than any chicken coop you've ever seen. I built it because it gets hot here in the summer, and I wanted to have a nice draft through the top of the chicken coop. Now if it's going to get below 15 degrees we'll wrap this top edge up in plastic and we'll get a little closer shot for everything we have ease of access to our laying boxes right here so basically we can just go right over here lift up and access our eggs we'll take you over and we'll show you close-ups of all this stuff how our coop works and maybe it'll give you some good food for thought and good ideas for your coop so somewhere way back there about 400 videos ago there's a link right here to our chicken coop build and that's when we built this coop we first got here on the farm it's probably about two years old so this is the coop we'll open it up for you it has two by four construction very very simple this door swings wide open so we can get in here there's a little board right here that slides up and down so I can pull a wheelbarrow up underneath the coop we'll show you so that board comes out and I can slide a wheelbarrow up underneath there and just rake out the poopy now you don't want to go cleaning your chicken coop out at this time of year you want that poop to serve as insulation for the bottom of your coop. So just keep adding and adding and adding with your straw bedding or your sawdust. What that does is help ensure that your chickens have a nice insulated bed on the bottom. And actually the fermenting manure that's underneath there can provide some heat for your chickens. So you'll come down here inside the coop, even though it has this open top, you'll come down here and it'll be 10 degrees warmer in this coop, just from the bird's body heat and just from the manure in the bottom. All right, let's take you in here. These are the birds that were left over from our chicken slaughter the other day. And this is a Rhode Island Red, got a Buff Orphington back here somewhere. And we got a couple of guineas. You can see a guinea back there too. And somebody tell me what kind of bird that is. What kind of bird is this pretty little striped bird? So here's the setup in the chicken coop. Basically, we have a chain that's nailed up to the ceiling to support our feeder. And we have this little contraption that you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever. I'll post a link to it in the video description. Basically, it hangs the feeder. We want to hang the feeder up high enough to where the birds can't kick a bunch of trash into it. So this is how we do it. Take that little hook, we fill up our feeder, and we hang it up right there on the hook. Very, very simple, very easy design. These are our nesting boxes and I've just stuffed all the nesting boxes and put another bed of litter in here for the chickens. We'll go ahead and get this guy filled up. Looks like we're running a little bit low on grub. So these chickens are really cool. The guinea fowl is really, really fun to play with, fun to look at. They're very skittish though. Weird looking critter. Here are our roosting poles that go across right here and we basically just use some cedar logs and we've got about 12 chickens in here. The coop itself here is about a five by eight, so we're giving the birds about 40 square feet inside. 
So let's talk a little bit about our outside run. This is an eight by eight, so it's 64 square feet. So we've got about 105 square feet for these birds. And basically I just open the door here and let them free range around the garden when it's not so much snow on the ground. Pretty simple. They're digging around in here. I just put this fresh litter in. We always save our chicken scraps and I've got a big old tub of chicken scraps we're gonna dump in there. We save our chicken scraps, we give them to our birds. They're just great little garbage disposals to have around the farm. And we got some apple peelings here and some apple cores and some pickled beets. Chickens love the table scraps. They don't know quite what to think right now, but they love those table scraps. Good stuff. So now you've seen the inside of the coop, the laying boxes, and the run that we have for the chickens. We'll be retiring some of these birds pretty soon. These are white leghorn chickens. They've been here for three or four years now. I think this is our fourth season with these white leghorn chickens. They lay one egg a day, every day, 365 days a year. They do a great job. Now one more feature of our chicken coop is lighting. We have motion lights mounted up on the chicken coop so if predators come at night, they get the light shined on them and most of the time it just scares them away. Unless they're about to starve to death, they're not going to try to get in this chicken coop because they're going to be exposed. So the biggest thing you can do to a predator to keep them away is expose them. Same thing with your house too. The biggest thing you can do for a burglar to keep them away is shine a bright light in their face. Now what we do as a little trick to keep our birds laying all winter long is sprinkle a little touch of cayenne pepper over in their waterer. What that does is gives them a warm fuzzy feeling. They feel like it's spring or summertime again and they start laying. If your birds aren't aren't laying, try it. I swear it works. Another thing you can do to keep your laying hens laying is to get a light with a timer on it and let it run for two hours after dark. That works pretty good generally. If you get too bright of a light or you leave it on for too long, you can throw the bird cycle off and you might get a few double yoked eggs. Those are kind of cool too. Now we're here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. So our temperatures really don't drop much below zero degrees Fahrenheit. But if you live out west, if you live in a mountainous region, if you live up north, Michigan or New Hampshire or something like like that New England area, you may want to search out breeds that don't have very large combs, meaning the red thing on the top of the head. Birds with a very tall comb, a very thick, robust, tall comb tend to get frostbite on their comb. So you need to think about that if you're thinking about buying chickens or if you have chickens with a tall comb and you live in a northern area, then you might want to keep a heat lamp in there in their coop if it gets down below zero. Our birds have been just fine. We've had the lowest temperature is negative two. They've been just fine. The coop normally stays 10 to 15 degrees warmer just from the body heat of the chickens. The biggest thing that you can do to protect your birds from the cold weather is to keep the wind out. So if it gets really, really cold, we'll wrap this guy up in plastic right here, or you can wrap your own chicken coop up in plastic. The biggest thing you can do to help your birds is to keep the wind off of them. If the temperature isn't below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, consistently. I don't think you need a heat lamp. I think the proof's in the pudding. These birds have never had to have a heat lamp. They've done absolutely fantastic. So guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the farm today. We thought we'd take you down to our little barnyard chicken coop here and talk to you a little bit about chickens. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell icon down there to notify you when I post a new video. There's a lot more fun stuff like this to come. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Woo! Remember, you didn't win the argument if the other person still thinks they need to have heat in the coop. You can put heat in the chicken coop. It won't hurt anything, but if you want to save on your electric bill, you don't need to put heat in the coop unless it's below 15 degrees and really windy outside for a long period of time. Your chickens will do fine.